we would like to share with you the video of one of our members, Kumasi Hive in Kumasi, Ghana, and show you how they have been servicing their community and trying to provide solutions during the COVID pandemic. My name is Gertrude Marinago, and I'm with the Projects and Operations team at Kumasi Hive. At the Hive, our mission is to create equal opportunities for the Ghanaian youth. We achieve this by providing them training in entrepreneurial, digital and technical skills. We support our local community by equipping them with relevant skills in emerging technologies such as robotics, internet of things, artificial intelligence and web development. Again, Kumasi Hive supports burden startups with funding to scale up their businesses. SMEs are giving support through our incubation and acceleration programs. Our activities at the Hive are focused on innovation, creativity and women empowerment through capacity building that makes us special. Another thing that makes us unique is that we are among the few hubs in Ghana with a maker space. On impact making, we equip beneficiaries of our training programs with the necessary skills needed to create job opportunities for themselves, thereby promoting entrepreneurship. Through our STEM education programs, we also impact the younger generation for the future. We faced a number of challenges this year. COVID-19 happened unexpectedly and that negatively impacted some of our operations. Most of our training programs done in person had to be moved to virtual platforms and that afforded us the opportunity to digitize our training programs to reach a wider audience. As a not-for-profit organization, most of our program funds are dependent on donor support. These funding were either delayed or diverted to support COVID-19 relief projects and as a result crippled some projects. That notwithstanding, we embarked on other projects, key of which is the Makers Assemble project, where low-cost materials were used to design and manufacture some COVID-19 relief items, including an ICU bed, face shields, and contactless infrared thermometer guns. These items were donated to hospitals and frontline workers. Day in, day out, we create impact by our activities, whether through training or working on projects. Kumasi Hive is the pace setter for innovation in Ghana. Kumasi Hive connects, innovate, grow. Was ich hier super cool finde, ist, dass es nicht Profit, sondern werteorientiert ist und man tatsächlich einfach das Leben von Menschen verbessern kann. Willkommen zur Open Mars Academy! Wir entwickeln in kleinen Teams Hilfsmittel und Lifehacks, die das Leben wirklich einfacher machen. Von der Idee bis zum funktionierenden Prototyp. Sven zum Beispiel fällt jetzt Fahrrad. Und macht Spaß, Sven? Was auch Spaß macht? Unsere Lösung, mit der jeder Rolli zum E-Roller-Rolli wird. Du musst es einfach mal machen. Und wenn es dann funktioniert, machen wir es für alle zugänglich. Nachbaubar. Open Source für, für alle. alle. Außergewöhnlich, oder? Zusammen mit Jonas, Asie, Rike, Tobi, Adina. Chong, Robert, Maike, Mervin, Anastasia, Flo, Daniel, Dean, Sven, Maggie, Lena, Thomas, Ferdi, Bea, Ian, Isa, Paul. Und in diesen Werkstätten und Fab Labs kann wirklich jede Idee zur Realität werden. Hier ist viel Platz für außergewöhnliche Innovationen. Neben Workshops und Vorträgen kann man hier auch einfach richtig geile Sachen ausprobieren, wie ein 3D-Drucker oder Löten oder sowas. Das ist richtig cool! 
macht total Sinn, ein Produkt zu entwickeln mit der Person, die es auch benötigt. Endlich mal ein Projekt, wo du nicht überlegst, irgendwie, was soll das Ganze eigentlich, sondern einfach Sachen machen. Du hast keine Lust, Ideen für die Schublade zu entwickeln? Dann mach doch bei uns mit. Ich finde die Open Health Academy deswegen so großartig, weil sie zeigt, wie lame die Industrie ist. Es kann doch eigentlich nicht sein, dass äh, Hobby-Produktentwickler sich bessere Ideen überlegen, als das, was ich in jedem Sanitätshaus finde. The Carabos Assistive Tech Massive Project seeks to empower people living with disabilities by removing the barrier of the lack of assistive devices. The project is in two phases, training and co-creation, which culminates in a hackathon and pitching summit, manufacturing and incubation. Trainees for the program have been selected. They have been taken through intensive and interactive training sessions on product design, 3D modeling and fabrication, and material selection. This training is done in person and virtually. A virtual challenge to engage and evaluate the skills of trainees in 3D modeling and fabrication, and material selection has been launched and trainees are working on mini projects in teams. Teams will develop a universal doorknob lever that easily converts a standard doorknob into a lever handle. People with difficulty gripping a standard doorknob should find this adapted lever handle an easy way to open a door. The handle should be ideal for anyone who has weak hands, osteoporosis or arthritis. Designs by each team will be shared on all our social media platforms for our online community vote for the best.
sou a Rama Bárbara e minha parceria com Criatura começou com um trabalho de arquitetura, paisagismo e intervenções urbanas, isso antes da pandemia. E paralelamente a isso, eu já vinha desenvolvendo há oito anos um trabalho na trama inventiva, que era a criação de produtos no viés ecológico, materno, feminino. Quando chegou o momento da pandemia, a gente começou a pensar novas soluções para continuar o nosso trabalho, ao mesmo tempo não oferecer mais riscos e a obedecer às determinações, né? Isolamento e de distanciamento social. O material, ele primeiramente é destinado todo bruto para a casa criatura, onde lá tem a base das máquinas de corte a laser. Esse corte é feito por uma equipe, que no caso é o coletivo 3D. A gente, é, eu pego, recebo esse material e faço a esterilização dele. A montagem, ela é, foi sendo desenvolvida, foram sendo desenvolvidos vários modelos. Então, no início tinha outros processos, tipo de colagem, de peças, e a gente foi melhorando cada vez mais, mais simples, mais confortável. Então, a montagem dele é, é feita rapidamente e a gente consegue ter uma, uma boa produção para dar realmente vazão a essa, essa grande demanda que a sociedade está tendo. É, o foco é que realmente a gente consiga atender mais as, as populações mais necessitadas, ou seja, a nossa intenção é sempre baratear realmente esse custo para que ele possa ser acessível e que possa realmente é, servir como uma solução para o dia a dia das pessoas. Uma grande revolução, né? Porque se antes a gente ficava muito à mercê das tecnologias estarem concentradas realmente nas grandes indústrias, nas empresas, quando isso chega ao acesso né, das pessoas que se interessam por tecnologia, que podem inclusive pegar uma tecnologia que já está desenvolvida e desenvolver sua própria, seu próprio protótipo em cima daquilo que já está ali, isso é uma coisa muito realmente revolucionária. Aquelas pessoas que precisam realmente estar tá na rua trabalhando, que não tem essa opção de estar tá em casa se resguardando, então são essas pessoas que a gente visa atender para que é, fortaleça realmente essa base da, da sociedade que, que precisa de uma atenção especial. Hello everybody, welcome to this session. Um, my name is Georgia Nicolau, I am from Brazil. Um, I am part of this amazing network called Global Innovation Gathering. And today, uh, this session is part of the DOTS uh, program, which is a summit uh, made uh, of by and from the network of Global Innovation Gathering. Um, so, um, here in Brazil, uh, I run an organization called Instituto Procomum. We have been part of GIG since the beginning, including since even we were a, a formal organization, we were already participating in this network. Uh, 
Uh, Gig started in 2013 as a lounge in the Republica event and with uh, hubs main, mainly from um, Africa, Asia and also Latin America and also uh, but also Europe and US, always with the aim of uh, putting creative people together that are developing solutions for social problems. Um, and we are a network of hubs everywhere uh, and we are all working with uh, development of technologies being either socio technologies or um, just other kinds of technologies to um, solute problems that are in our territories, but also cooperating translocally and internationally. And today we're going to talk about a specific project, which is Caribos, which was something that was quite an example of a transnational cooperation to address certain issues related to society and technology. Um, Procomum is based in Santos. Um, we have a space you can call it a hub, but we call it a citizen lab or a citizen innovation lab. And in our space, we work with the with a commons uh, orientation, let's say. And our mission is to build a commons world with the different people and different knowledge. We value uh, diversity of epistemologies and narratives and uh, access to knowledge, but also production of knowledge. We do have a hacker space and a makers, maker space inside this space, but we also have an artistic residency and we have communities of practice that range from uh, zero waste to uh, intersectionality of LGBTQI plus and, and, and uh, class, for example, uh, solidarity economy, conscious consumption, um, we have a school of arts, a school for social entrepreneurship. So we, we range in a, a variety of, you know, plugins, uh, all to build, uh, to be a platform of networks that are wanting to transform and create a more equal world. And I'm not alone today. I'm really glad that I'm here with my great partner, Ricardo Ruiz. Ruiz has been our partner since forever. We've been collaborating, but uh, specifically today, this year, with Caribou's project that you'll hear more soon. Uh, we had a great exchange between the Northeast, where he's located, and Southeast, where we are located. So welcome, Ricardo. Thank you. And please introduce yourself, your amazing work, and what is that we are doing here today. Okay, Georgia, thank you very much. It's always nice to be with you here and with everyone that's watching us. And I'm also part of the Caribos and just like Georgia said, I'm from Brazil and this is quite interesting, the Geek Network, the South to South collaboration, you know, and you can see our round dots and that used to be physical some years ago, but now let's see next year. Uh, and that's, it's all about this relationship, this collaboration between the South initiatives leading with inter citizen innovation or social innovation and the, all these different kinds of innovative entrepreneurship around the globe. Uh, that's last year took part in Nakuru, uh, countryside of Nairobi, and just like Georgia said again, it's interesting to note that Olinda, where we are established, and Santos are both metropolitan areas of important cities in the country, you know? So more than just the South to South collaboration, is the collaboration between the peripheries, the margins, because we always know it will, it will happen in the center, you know, but it, it starts in the borders. So it's nice to be in the borders doing that collaboration and exchanging ideas and knowledge. This panel specifically is quite interesting for me because it's the project we've been developing the last year together with, not just with Procomum, but with, I don't know, 10 maybe more hubs around the globe developing products for healthcare, you know, and not products as the market 
things about products, but products developed to fit the person and to be developed together with the person, together with the doctors and designers. Uh, to talk a little bit more about carryables, I would like to invite Fadia here. Uh, Fadia is also part of the geek community and part of carryables. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight or this afternoon, maybe this morning, Fadia. And be welcome, please introduce yourself. Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Georgia. It's so lovely to be here on the second day of DOS. Um, I'm Fabia Ogarib. I come originally from Cairo, Egypt. Um, I'm currently working on the Carable team, uh, more based in Berlin, the office in Berlin as part of the gig network. Um, I would like to um, talk about how the Carables uh, interest me in the first place. Uh, I believe that Carables is about transforming the mindset around healthcare. Um, to something that's more open, that, that is basically the, the, the main uh, motto that we stand for in Carables. And I feel that this process of transformation is, is, is what is very interesting. How could you um, manage to make communities transform their mindset onto the basic health care that they ought to receive? Uh, especially groups uh, that are not in the center, that are mar marginalized. Uh, coming from Egypt, where we ourselves uh, are in a transformative phase, uh, it's super interesting to see how can we change the culture around healthcare. Um, yeah, and it's been super delightful to work with all these global partners all around the world and to see things happening uh, and try to just bring the people to share that knowledge also. Uh, the idea that, you know, so some space makerspace in Ghana could learn from an experience uh, of this other space in Nepal or in Brazil where you are, Ricardo and Georgia, um, has been magnificent to, to watch as a process. So this to me is, a, is an idea of a platform. This is what Carable stands for. It's that platform where different spaces, different individuals are working on that specific topic uh, that is related to the healthcare and, and exchanging knowledge in that sense. Amazing. Thanks, Fadia. And uh, so, and today I think that uh, which is really nice. Um, so the, 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 let's say the title of this session is Global Open Source Healthcare. How can you support the community around your hub with Carables? And I think that um, both me and Huiz, we have uh, really interesting stories to tell and uh, that we can relate to, but that are also quite different uh, because he lives in one context and I live in another one. Even though we're in the same country, we have a lot of differences. And um, and we also have a lot of videos to show. It has been an intense year. And I don't know if you both agree with me, but I have the feeling that Caribou's kind of predicted the moment that we were going to leave because when the project started, uh, you know, talking about open technology, talking about the relationship with health and open technology and a people-centered health, uh, it was before the pandemic, uh, but uh, of course, the, a lot of the crises that we've seen after the pandemic were already there, right? So our relationship with health, our relationship with technology, the fact that we don't have a technological divide, but we do have a social divide that, of course, influences the technological divide. And um, and I think that uh, for my perspective and for Procommun perspective, um, the fact that now we are we are having a race for a vaccine that are all patented and that uh, Global South is one more time going to be, you know, uh, paying for it, for the global trade agreement and that we don't have an open source vaccine. I think it already says a lot about uh, how this uh, way of living of ours, see health and uh, 
see the importance of health and technology, right? So the race for investing money in technology. So I, I, I think I welcome a lot uh, uh, this project uh, Caribous because it gave, uh, I think, the perspective of talking about health and talking about technology and more than that, producing health and technology uh, in contexts that um, uh, maybe we wouldn't be making these kind of conversations, right? Um, yeah, so tell me. Especially one second, especially bringing to the table the idea of the open source into the health and technology. You know, this is, this is fundamental, this is basic of life. And if you think the future to come, that what you're going to be in 2030s, 2040s, you know, when we will be mass producing food in a small places, small printers around the globe, you know, will this food be open source? You know, the medicines, if they are not open source, the vaccines, they, they, they rely on, on policies and politicians, you know, mm -hmm. and how the open source community can really got into this, this movement of medicine and health and care and care for the others and care for yourself, I think is the uh, quite important the Careables program and how it can help the community not only around the hubs but in a even broader sense, you know, in a planetary landscape. Yeah. What I think is also interesting is to to see to study how the existing health care system is not serving, basically, it's not catering for the need of so many groups. And thus comes out uh, uh, the, the very um, supposedly normal uh, solution is that health is open for everyone. And basically all this standard, standardized production of uh, um, products that are related to the health uh, care system uh, has proven to be uh, not catering to, for example, the needs of people with disabilities. Um, so to bring those different stakeholders together, to think of the designer, to think of the person in need of that design and to bring both perspectives together and to see the product and the process that comes out of it, uh, I think is the core of what Caribus is about. So it's no longer that the manufacturing is the manufacturer is manufacturing manufacturing what they need to do, and they're getting into this whole capitalist system of production and making profit, um, regardless of of the user, basically the the end user that is going to use that thing. Um, it's super interesting to see what happens when we bring the designer and the person in need and how does this brainstorming session happen how both of them communicate with different languages whether the technical language of the designer or the person who is looking to improve um, how they live their daily lives and we've seen that in the products that have been produced in the past years um, which are documented on welder for example uh, some of them are this we the wheelchair product that we later uh, that is also present on the platform and maybe we'll uh, talk about later uh, or the glifo this invention that was made uh, um, yeah to to basically um, help children with certain disabilities grow something as simple as that or or to be able to express themselves in that sense. Um, uh, so yeah, that to me is is a really interesting point to think about when we talk about uh, the the Caribou as as a platform. Uh, it's also the process of documentation. So what we can see here, for example, throughout this platform, this is a platform that is made to document uh, hardware, basically the the, the design process, um, and and using this platform, you can go from zero basically, have, basically having nothing to to 3d printing a product that could help the local community for example without having to depend on uh cro corporations or um, having to have a lot of money to buy expensive uh, devices ricardo i remember there was also one of the products here which was uh, the hat 
and that that had a very interesting story. Uh, it was invented during the time of uh, the pandemic as it started. So maybe you can tell us more about how did that go for the space there for for Casa for example, and how did they handle this uh, pandemic, having been part of Caribals also beforehand. This is a quite interesting story, Fajr. I, I would be glad to share because uh, the idea of this hat, but not only those hats, we made a different formats of hats. For example, this one here that we call it the dub shield, you know? So we have here the dub shield for people with dreadlocks, but we also have a turbans for women, you know? We have a protection here. And uh, the hat shield, that is the kind of shield we, the fishermen use here in this part of Brazil, you know? So at some point we realized that the black Brazilian population, that is half of the country, and that was the ones that need to go walk, they need to protect as well. We need to protect our community much higher than just, you know, the, the traditional ways. So how could you protect, protect with style, you know, because if the turban, why, why do you use a turban, you're from Egypt, you know, you, you, you want to be, look, I'm with a turban, respect me, you know, with style. And uh, this is the main thing because uh, even the word, uh, I know you have this lawyer background in your life and even the word, immune it came from the 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 lawyers you know it came from the the judiciary system because the immune were the ones that didn't need to pay taxes in the greek empire or things like this so they are the immune you know and everyone else was the desmuni so after pastor and all these things of vaccines and this thing they brought the term from advocacy to the health sector and bring the immune this idea of the fausto of get you know the occidental idea of the viral man the white viral man immune to everything it does doesn't pay taxes it's it's friend of the king you know and this idea of the immune is what this pandemic brings to a tone, you know, like, and what about the next morning? You know, the, the Minister of Health of Brazil said yesterday that if we have demand, we will buy a vaccine. It, it's, it's a whole country, a demand enough. You know, so it, it's quite interesting to always note the political side behind this situation, you know? Um, this actually leads me to ask you, how do you think Caribals, how would you identify the role Caribals played in interacting with the local community where you are? So, you know, we've seen, for example, this whole um, products that have been produced in the past year, and it would be interesting to know uh, how was Caribals perceived at the beginning and uh, whether people understand what, what it stands for? How does the space itself help the people there, if you think it helps in any way? Yeah, I think that uh, just to recap a bit, we started the year uh, having an event in Olinda. So, we went, I went to Olinda uh, and uh, we made together an event uh, with uh, Casa Criatura, which is the hub where Ricardo uh, um, works and, and builds uh, uh, the networks. And it's really a different context because like they are so, um, and it was really, really well, let's say, perceived for the community. So I, I, we had a lot of people there from the public health sector, but also from NGOs 
um, architects and collectives and creatives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we're, we're, and people were already doing stuff, right? And I think that's really important to say, like both me and Ricardo, we have a long story of working also with open tech and open access to uh, knowledge in general. So not only tech, but also this concept of, you know, free culture that we call the free culture. So Procomun considers itself a free culture uh, organization. What it, so so by, and when we say free, we don't mean free beers, right? Which is different. Uh, we, mean, we, we, we mean free as in freedom, uh, which is quite different from free beers. Um, and uh, it's totally connected to the commons, uh, which is um, uh, it's, it's about ownership, but it's also co about it's about co-ownership. And it's about creating uh, uh, um, solutions and uh, from self-determined communities. So in, in our case, um, in Santos, we had a whole plan of involving the territory around the space because our space is in downtown, where it's a really vulnerable space, uh, but it's also a mixture of things such as, um, you know, Olinda also, even though it's a totally different urban context, it's the same. So you have uh, different things uh, happening like commerce uh, and also drug users uh, coexisting with um, uh, low infrastructure for, for housing, for example. But of course, our plans of involving the, the territory around were not so uh, succeeded because uh, the, the pandemic brought the need of us to look at community in others also senses. Uh, in Procomu, we always uh, say that we work with three levels of community. So the, the community around our hub, uh, territorially around our hubs, um, the community of creatives that uh, that are creating community the great the communities of practice in the lab, and com the community of commoners such as you, Fadio, and Luis. We are, you are also our community, right? We are we are also part of the same network, and we work with these three layers of community all the time. And I think that what the pandemic brought was really, you know. Uh, a sense of rapid response. So in the end, I think what is really interesting is that Carables was was working as a platform. So institutionally, maybe oh, people were not saying, "Well, I'm I'm doing a Carables. I'm working for Carables." But Carables supported actions that were really, really rapidly emerging, uh, such as. Um, as soon as the pandemic started, really in the beginning of the year, our working group of hackers at the lab joined themselves with other hackers from, from the region and started producing face shoots and, and Carabao supported that action. So we cannot say that Procomun made that action or even that Carabao's made that action. We all supported the action because people, they were already doing things. And I, I think this is what, what we are saying when we're saying of the power of communities, of reaction, of self-determined communities working with resources and with protocols, right? So this is one thing that Carable supported, for example. And, and then another thing that I think is really nice also bringing it up is um, the, the multi-parameter uh, low-cost monitor. So Rafael uh, had this uh, project like, uh, and he couldn't find uh, partners in his university and etc. cetera. He, he comes from peripheries of Sao Paulo as well. And he applied uh, for, um, for our emergency lab response that we created with also the support of Carabos. And uh, his story is just amazing. And, you know, the, he, he makes this multi-parameter monitor that, you know, can, uh, um, can be used uh, in, even in war situations um, that, uh, that are su it's super low cost, it's like $20. And let me show a video of him. Oh, he's here also in the... Ricardo, can you put for me this... Uh, he's, he's here in Welder. Look, I'm gonna put in the chat his uh, link to the Welder. And, um, and Rafael is just an amazing person doing something in, out of his room. He's super shy and he was doing that in his room, you know. He just was, he was looking for people to connect. 
And during the emergency lab, he worked with collaborators and mentors. Ruiz was one of the mentors also. And, um, and then he stayed in our network. He never went out. So everything, every new thing that we were doing, um, I can share my, my screen. Everything that we were doing, he was also doing together. So he, he mm -hmm. came for, um, for the maker gathering. And now he's working with one of the one of the people from um, Gui's communities. That, and, and now he writes me all the time saying that he's like with ideas of creating an open source city. And I told him I would introduce him to Stephen Kovacs. And, uh, and I mean, he's now all over the place and, uh, and doing other things. And, and, the, and he, he came all the way to Santos to deliver the monitor. And then now the monitor is at the exhibition that we are doing at the Arch Nujiki. So we are doing an exhibition in another NGO that works with children in the biggest stilt slum of Latin America. And a stilt slum is that slums are flooded. And uh, Arch Nujiki is a, a, like a you know, really important NGO. And uh, we are doing the exhibition there. And then Danielle, that is part of our network, created a whole scenario also telling Rafael's story and how Rafael's story ended up building a monitor, a multi-parameter that is low cost and open access. So I think, you know, how would, like when people wrote the Caribou's project that was just a form super bureaucratic for European Union, because I know that there are all applications for European Union are super bureaucratic. You know, when you're like writing this project there with like more a consortium of like seven organizations and, you know, uh, university, etc. And the fact that it reached people like Raphael, for example, uh, and all of us, I think this is really, some, you know, amazing. And, um, and I think for us, like, for me personally, it's about, you know, um, so Raphael is never going to be out of us again so he's now community also and i think that that's really important to say you know when what, what we are saying when we're speaking about community and uh, i think like one of our work is really to be suing all these networked communities and putting them together and i'm sure also Luis has also a lot of great stories to tell i'm i'm muted it's it's the new the new phrase of the century. All right, so uh, we were very focused on our local context, but Caribos also have other countries, other hubs. So this is the video from Nepal that I think is quite important and quite interesting. The work Baha have been doing in Nepal in the last years, together with GIG. And just like Georgia said, with support from Carreos, uh, it's quite transforming their community also. So I just need to find the play button. Uh, it's here, so I'll share my screen with everyone. It will be much. So to be honest, 
The exposure has been extraordinary. So with this exposure, the impact it has created is incomparable. Normally the products uh, made are focused on a particular group and needs to be iterated for another group. Similarly, many products have been modified in context of Nepal and we believe few products from Nepal has been able to create an impact in the world. So yeah, we would like to thank you so much for this opportunity and we look for future collaboration. It's because we would like her to tell about the exhibition that the, that uh, Caribos created, which was something amazing because it was uh, you know several hubs at the same time, and uh, so you just saw the video of the exhibition that happened in Nepal, which is a part of the Caribos. So like we all did a lot of things throughout the year, and now it was also the uh, a way of showing what we did and involving even more people. So maybe Fadia could you. Give us like some words about the exhibition. Yes, absolutely. So I can talk about the exhibition from my side, which was basically coordinating between all these different hubs around the world. Um, so we have the exhibition happening or has happened in seven different um, uh, countries or cities to be more accurate. Um, so the exhibition was the idea of reaching out at the end um, of this year. So Carib Okay, I think Fadja is um, probably the internet is telling her to go to sleep. <laughs> and so um, if she returns, then uh, we can we can ask her to, to be, continue speaking about the exhibition. But maybe we can uh, give an example who is of the exhibition with um, Danielle's uh, preparation for it, which is uh, the one I can, I can, I can share my screen here. So, um, so this is um, Daniel. He is an art director um, and uh, I don't know, inventor, really. And he works. Uh, he is part of our community. He's part of uh, the community uh working group from that we called inventions so he invents things and he made the the um, art design for the exhibition that we also did and basically everything is upcycled and uh, he he kind of made like a movie telling the stories um of both face shoots so he's this, this is the story oh. and Oh. And this is the movie of Rafael's life uh, that uh, began in the periphery of Sao Paulo until he created the, mo the parameter monitor. So, and this is a, uh, this stayed at the exhibition. Uh, let me show you. Um, um, some pictures, let me show here. Um, so he, this is how it looked uh, in the in the exhibition, right? Here, the sound is good. So this is the exhibition, and um, at the NGO that I just told you about in the beginning, uh, it's you like uh, the, this is when we were uh, doing it. So. This is how it looked. So what Daniel did was really tell the story as like in a in a movie of both the face shields, how it began, and you could open here. Kids could can open here, and it would be written. And here is the story of uh, Rafael's life also. And um, so this is one example. Uh, and this is Rafael. Um, 
so this is one example of you know the exhibition that Fadia was speaking. I, I just saw that she came back. <laughs> Hi. This is, also, this is also one of the examples that when you are writing a project, you don't feel, you know, you how can you how can you imagine that a project written as Caribou would become a theater of recycle of upcycled material, you know? Uh, this I think is incredible, really incredible. So please Falia, tell us a little bit more about the exhibition. I think her connection is sure. bad. So maybe let's try one more time. Yeah. Yes, great. Let's try one more time. Um, I don't know where I stopped exactly, so I'm going to start from somewhere. Um, so as, as I was saying, um, so coming to an end now, to the end of funding uh, of the project for now, uh, it was important to start um, showcasing the products that had been produced and it was also interesting to see that in, in terms of the interaction between the hub and the local community and how could these products and the principles of what Caribou stands for from uh, open source, um, uh, free design, people collaborating together to come out with a product, uh, how could it be showcased um, in these different spaces? And given the very, very special circumstances that we all live in at the moment, it was also tricky because we planned the exhibition before the pandemic had started. Um, so the idea was to keep it as decentral as possible, not only in terms of that exhibition happening in different parts of the world, as I was saying, it's happened in six to seven cities so far, um, but also to see if these exhibitions or these hubs could exchange what they have done with the other hubs. Uh, and it's been a very, very interesting process to uh, coordinate so far. Uh, so we've had uh, the posters created, the different hubs showcasing the different products. Um, and also we've had uh, people making videos talking about the, uh, the hub itself and its role, as we can see here that is happening in Kumasi through the amazing um, Kumasi High space, maker space. So this is one of the exhibitions that happened so far. We've also had an amazing exhibition that we showed previously happened in uh, Nepal, Kathmandu. So, and, and that, that really constitutes um, the first step, hopefully, in, in a longer road of more hubs coming on board and uh, more interaction with the local community and seeing how, to me, what's very interesting always is how could you um, transfer that knowledge. And since we live right now, and even more because of the corona, we've been more online and we've been communicating more and doing these kind of webinars and doing these kind of um, um, summits. So it's interesting to see if that same platform could be used to exchange um, other kinds of knowledge that could help build things. And that is what is exciting to me always to see. So, and I know, for example, that both also, both youth spaces did the exhibition. So maybe you can go a little bit more on how was the experience uh, having hosted the exhibition in Casa Cariatura, Ricardo, for example. Uh, just like you said, it was interesting, uh, the situation, you know, uh, a mix of, uh, okay, let's do an exhibition, but during the pandemic, uh, when, you, when we start to think about it, where would be a nice place to do an exhibition during this pandemic? And after, after some small designing process, we decided to make it in a healthcare center. You know, so we approached the, the institution and it was also part of the Secretary of Health of Olinda. Uh, and this is interesting point that I want to talk about. Uh, when Carrier was started in Olinda, the first actor we approached to be part of the project, a part of Procomun and the Gig Network, was the Secretary of Health of Olinda. 
And this was really important because during the pandemic and when the pandemic was arriving, we could deliver better our products, you know, and now we are making part of the Glypho partnership. Together with the Secretary of Health, we will donate another 100 Glyphos for children uh, and this Casa Creatura will support with programming, printing, selecting the size and those things that Glypho uh, makes necessary, you know. So this was something really important on, on that moment. And then we decided to make the exhibition inside one of these hospitals. Uh, it didn't work very well in the end because uh, a lot of safety issues during the pandemic, you know, and even though we had all the bureaucratic process ready and everything set to be done during the assembly of the exhibition, the maintenance supervisor said, no, no way. We, we don't want anything here, we don't, we need to be very clean with, you know, so we couldn't make the exhibition, the walls and those things, so we bring the exhibition to, the, to our maker's pads. And, for coincidence or not, the main TV channel was there to record about our space and these things, and they record the exhibition, so we had a virtual exhibition on broadcast, broadcasted in the main TV channel, you know, so uh, this kind of weird situation that just in 2020 we, we, we will <laughs> survive to tell the history of this, this moment, you see, it's, it's more like that, I, no. Who is? Um, maybe we could show a video of, uh, so just be, uh, to get a sense of Casa Criatura, how it is. Yes, great idea. I will, I will, I will grab around the video that I have here. It's important to show as well because it's one of the products that we are developing here that are the vegetable sprouts, you know, because we start to think healthcare as a whole, you know, so we are cutting the top of this, let me play it again just to stop, so, oh, sorry, <laughs> all right, so we have the model for this, just this small piece of coat and this other one here, so, and the way of doing it to create your own juice or to create your own morning sprouts to eat, you have it on welder as well, you know, and you also have how to do aromatherapy pillows that, you know, we develop it also, and uh, this is interesting because in the beginning of the process, during the South to South collaboration, we thought the necessities of the population in healthcare in the South, they are different, you know, of course, we have all the situations with disabilities, but even with disabilities person, they do get dengue, you know, they, they do get bad nutrition during childhood. So we have to tackle many different situations when you think about healthcare in the global south, you know, we, we have to think about malaria, we have to think about open source vaccines and all the, the things you said. I will search for a nice video here. Just one second. <laughs> okay. Um, should we say goodbye now, Fadja? Or do you want to say your last words? You're muted. Let me unmute you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to have been um, here today with both of you. I very much appreciate your work and it gives me a lot of hope to see that happening because uh, I do a lot of the computer work and it's uh, so lovely always to hear and see the things that are happening on the ground. Um, so thank you so, so thank much you. and very much looking forward to see you tomorrow at DOS. <laughs> Since that's not the live session. Um, so good night. This time for real, I promise. <laughs> Sleep well, darling. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Faja. Bye. Talk to you today. Uh, and Luis, before you show the video, 
Can you please tell what is Glifo? Because remember, we are presenting a, a program here, but not everybody is uh, well acquainted with what we mean. So you said that you are developing a Glifo, that you're delivering Glifo to the health uh, uh, secretary. So could you maybe tell what is a Glifo, please? Yes, for sure. Glifo is uh, support for children, and not just children, but with some dis oh no, with some disability. I I don't need the screen now because I show you and I will search here. But when you have some kind of disability, it's very difficult in your hand, especially. It's very difficult for you to hold a pen. You know, uh, uh, and not only physical disabilities, but many times neurological disabilities as well, you know, they are classified as physical. And I'm searching for it in Taube at the same time. And the, it was developed by OpenDot. Oh, thank you very much. That is part of the, the Carryables network as well. And it was lovely developed together with the community and doctors during long years. And they, made a kickstart campaign to reach as many people as possible so they got together with different institutions around the globe to organize donations and got the support for their kickstart campaign so here in Olinda we are because it's not just to print you know because every person has its own needs so you had to find the best fit and fit in between the models, but you have a software online to select the model for you. It's quite simple. So at Casa Criatura, we will do this, this bridge, you know, just to get measures, the special, the special needs, and to convert it to the software that is developed by OpenDot, and then bring the, the, the tool in a 3D printer. This is Gleeful. And regarding TV Criatura, I'm just finding its channel on YouTube. It's quite exciting. I will show the channel here for you, add to my stream. And please follow our channel here. Uh, you probably will find somewhere in the description if not it's TV Criatura. So you can, you can see the turbo here, the aerosol box we develop it, you know, and how to how to set up your own turban and to protect yourself during these difficult times and especially because of carryables we we get really worried about the amount of plastic we were delivering to nature into nature you know so we are now Establishing this 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 process with a group of biolog biologists and fishermen and uh, community education teachers to try to support this reforestation project. You know, so it's one hectare because. If you want to care, if we need to care, we need to care for the planet at the same time. And a hub, a makerspace, an innovation lab that works with the kind of technology that we work, laser cut, 3D printer, we deliver too many plastic, too many pollutants on the atmosphere. And we need to be, we need to care about that as well, you know? So, we are trying to care with the plants. We are now selecting, uh, cataloging plants, starting this ambiental education with the communities, what you have here. And some plants, especially this one here that shows now, we have a lot of traditional medicine plants in Brazil, all around the globe. But in Brazil, we cultivate not also, also the plants, but the history of it, how to prepare the the remedy you know so i think this is the next steps we are now reaching in carryables casa creature you know how we can care 
for the nature in a broader perspective. How can we care for ourselves? How can we care for the planet? You know, I think this is our main challenge now at Casa Criatura. Amazing, Ricardo. Congratulations for your work. And uh, I think you're totally right. And uh, this is why also uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, we got together, me and Luis, and we started a series of conversations about health and technology, uh, playing around with the tenses of the verb tenses. So past, future, present, the, actually the Portuguese tenses, which are a way a bit more complex than the English tenses. And uh, it was really nice to be hosting this series of conversations with him and a lot of, uh, of other uh, people from like indigenous communities in Colombia, hackers from Colombia, funders, uh, scientists, philosophers, and artists. Um, it was for me, I think it was one of the, I don't know, the nice thing that this year uh, happened. We had a lot of uh, people uh, that were together in the comments, uh, commenting and interacting with us. And I think it, it resonated so well with people because of what you were just saying of what do we mean by health? You know, where does health begins and ends? You know, I think all this also circular epistemology of, you know, uh, black people, ancestrality, you know, that health begins with life and 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 end with life as well, and I think uh, capitalism and also turned health into disease, and uh, and then when we think about health, we think about medicine, or you know, or, or by going to a drugstore yeah, or something, but uh, what what does it mean about when we're speaking about health? Uh, in terms of technology, so what kind of technologies we have here? So we have. Uh, a big knowledge on medicinal plants, you know, that are coming from, for example, Afro religion, uh, that uh, brought up by enslaved people, for example, but also from indigenous, but not only, you know, also from, you know, our ancestors. And there, it's also about health, right? Uh, and then, uh, so to me, I think the circular thinking is really helpful for us also to think forward of why such a program as Caribos is important and why it has to continue, uh, you know, and how it got shaped so differently in Ghana, Nepal, or Recife Olinda, or, or Santos, because what it shaped is it's also, of course, people, territory, you know, problem, solutions. So you have a specificity. So, this, I think it's really nice to, if we think about it as a common, so you have, we, when we say commons, we are not saying that everybody is equal, right? So we're speaking about singularities. So we are all quite singular in our contexts, but we do have some commonalities and we can find our commonalities and share our commonalities and share our learnings. And I think this is, I think maybe one of the, big learnings of caribos also and i was wondering ricardo maybe could you show a bit uh, i don't know did you show already singapore maybe you could show one or two more also to give more even more diversity to to this excellent excellent i will share the screen here we are approaching the end of your session unfortunately it's been really nice to talk about it but I do believe this session doesn't end here, you know. Uh, probably people are commenting here and we expect to grow the network to get more and more people involved in this kind of activities, you know, because just like I said, this network, we don't work for carriers, we don't work for carriers. We support and we are supported by, you know, so I think it's 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 quite interesting to to leave it as in a ramp, you know, to get it raw and to understand how we keep carrying further and further in this context of such adversities that we are living now, right? 
just finishing this this move here, I want to thank to Saad that shared everything from engineering good. You know, that is the, the maker lab in Singapore doing these things. Of course, he's not alone. It's also a big network of engineering doing good. <laughs> so and we need them, we need them. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Thanks again, Georgia. Thanks, Fad. You are not here, but you are in our heart. Thank you, Rui, for everything. Thank you for Thanks. the whole team of Caribos. And please don't miss dots. We have a, a whole program still today. We are in the second day of dots, but it's still the whole day and everything. Uh, things will be also in the gig channel. Um, if you want to access more about our work, Procomum also has a YouTube channel, Instituto Procomum. We also have Instagram at Procomum. Procomum is P-R-O-C-O-M-U-M. -M. And uh, also we have Facebook, of course. And uh, if you want to know more about Gig, we are Gig in the website. And Ricardo already shared his TV Criatura. They also have an Instagram uh, at Casa Criatura. C A S A S R I A T U R A, Casa Criatura. <laughs> and it's always a pleasure to be around you. Yes, me too. Bye bye. Bye bye, people. Bye. Salve, 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 Oxalá criou um mundo onde reina os orixás.